welcome back to the channel all right we have a very workman light presentation for you guys this is part two of the swarthy melanated black gorm whatever you want to call it irish series right here we have what do we have some online articles and the documentary and some commentary we're about to get right into it so we have bad team lead off the irish post article this is a legit article here we go okay so before we get into the video we want to look at these articles that i um found online and um this is the irish post article right here and um see there's a url right there so you know it's legit and see the picture right here it says um first irish people had dark to black skin similar to the cheddar man in britain right there so this is written by aiden lonergan and it's from uh 2018 right there february 8th 2018 so it's been out here for a minute so it reads um irish people who lived thousands of years ago likely had black skin similar to a discovery made in Britain this week according to DNA research. On Wednesday, geneticists at University College London and the Natural History Museum revealed that Cheddar Man, a Mesolithic skeleton found in summer in a Somerset cave in 1903, had dark to black skin, blue eyes, and curly hair. Cheddar Man, who had previously been portrayed as having brown eyes and light skin was among the first permanent settlers to make the UK their home and is related to around 10% of the modern population there. Scientists extracted the DNA by drilling a hole into his skull and drawing out bone powder with subsequent findings suggesting that light-skinned Europeans evolved later than previously thought. Speaking on RTE Morning Ireland, professor of population geneticist at Trinity College Dublin, Dan Bradley said his team have made similar findings about early Irish people. Okay, so let's keep scrolling down. Okay, and it says, uh, in a joint project with the National Museum of Ireland, Trinity are compiling data from two Irish individuals who lived over 6,000 years ago and had already discovered that they possessed similar traits to Cheddar Man. Okay, so now you see this Channel 4 Press right there. Uh, I'm going to watch that later. What? I'll definitely leave the link in the description to this article right there, and you can um, check out, check this out right here, the little video. All right, it says uh, the earliest Irish would have been the same as Cheddar Man and would have had darker skin than we have today. Professor Bradley said, "We think ancient Irish populations would be similar." The current very light skin we have in Ireland now is at the end point of thousands of years of surviving in a climate where there is very little sun. Uh, that's what they say. It's an ad adaptation to the need to synthesize vitamin D in skin. Yeah. <laughs> it has taken, yeah, I'm not going to read that far. That's conjecture, junk science right there. Okay, well, let's see. Okay, Professor Bradley added that his findings should suggest that early Irish men and women originated from areas such as Spain and Luxembourg. Similarly, Cheddar Man's tribe migrated to Britain at the end of the last Ice Age and shared DNA with individuals in Spain, Luxembourg, and Hungary. Okay. They came here very probably by boat, Professor Bradley said. They ate 
A lot of fish hunted wild boar and gathered plants and nuts. The research also suggests that there were around 30 to 40,000 people living on the island of Ireland during the era when darker skin was common. The scientists at Trinity College Dublin and the National Museum of Ireland hope to publish their research in full by the end of this year. Hey, isn't that some interesting information here? <laughs> Very interesting. You cannot say that things are being blackwashed quote unquote because well we know that the inverse was you know is the thing that happened so um you know earlier when i was in the spur of the moment i said that i found these articles online now nah, i didn't i didn't find them so i have to give credit to where you know where credit is due um Curi Mayo and straight up they have videos on this topic right here and you know, I'm just hopping on and riding the wave of you know, using their source materials, you know, without me coming across the videos. Hey, I wouldn't even be doing this. So, you know, um, yeah, it's better to make a video, in my opinion, than try to battle in the YouTube comment section. You know, can't do that. I'd rather just make a video reply and then um, post the link in the comment section. OK. So the next video, well, I mean, not next video, but the next article is that um, Noir article. So let's get into it. OK, so now we are about to get into another article here. And this is uh, the travel Noir. Early Irish people were black with blue eyes. New documentary suggests. So this, this is a pretty good article. So. You know without further ado we're gonna dive right in okay and it says well it's written by Parker Diakite from April 29th 2021 and it reads there's a new documentary that defies everything you may have thought about Irish people in fact the documentary titled the Burren heart of stone claims that the people who inhabited the land nearly 10,000 years ago were not white with blonde hair and blue eyes. Instead, Irish people were black with blue eyes, as first reported in Irish Times. Yep. Scientists in the documentary are using technology typically used in forensic criminal investigations to explore Ireland's past and surprising new details. What they claim to have found is that black Irish people inhabited the island along the coast of the Barren, the Burren, really, as hunters for nearly 4,000 years before they were replaced by settled farmers. They are believed to have gathered shellfish and hazelnuts as well as hunt wild boar in a region with a landscape of cliffs, caves, mountains, and more. Geneticist Dr. Laura Cassidy revealed that the people who moved into Ireland 4,000 years ago helped to establish the modern Irish gene pool as we know it today. And Dr. Cassidy isn't alone in, with her discovery. In 2018, geneticist at the University College London and the Natural History Museum said that Cheddarman, a Mesolithic skeleton, found in a cave in 1903 had dark to black skin with blue eyes and curly hair as reported in the irish post using dna and bone powder from the skeleton's skull scientists found that white europeans evolved later than previously thought okay so Okay, so let's drop down. The research also suggests that around 30 to 40,000 people were living on the island of Ireland during the era when darker skin was common. Excellent article, if I may say so myself. No commentary on this one. You guys saw it. You guys heard it. Um, commentary will be at the end, though, of the video. But let's proceed 
Okay, so now our third and final article is taken from the Irish Times and it is written by Ronan McGreevy on April 19th, 2021. And then 7.30 a.m. <laughs> if you want the time also. <laughs> yeah, I have the URL right here also, okay? It even has the temperature of the date it was written on. <laughs> If you, if you don't believe me still okay and it reads well this part it says uh, early Irish people were dark skinned with blue eyes documentary hunter gatherer population inhabited Ireland before being replaced by early farmers okay and it reads prehistoric Irish people were dark skinned and had blue eyes a new documentary claims the hunter gatherer or the hunter gather population that lived in Ireland 10,000 years ago do not have any of the pigmentation profiles associated with light skin. They inhabited the island for 4,000 years before being replaced by settled farmers. See that picture right there? Yeah, okay. It says the information is contained in a documentary about the Baron in County Clare broadcast on RTE on Sunday. According to TCD geneticist Dr. Laura Cassidy, techniques normally associated well used in forensic criminal investigations have revealed surprising details about prehistoric Irish people. Scientists have been developing a genetic database of ancient Irish genomes from all periods of prehistory to understand how the modern Irish gene pool came about. She said the hunter gatherer gatherer pot irish not only had dark skin but also bright blue eyes a combination rarely seen today they operated mostly along the coast of the barren gathering shellfish and then moving inland to hunt wild boar and gather hazelnuts the barren's unique geological landscape means it has preserved evidence of millennia of settlement in the area of west clare the hunter gatherers were replaced by early farmers. The earliest evidence of farmers in Ireland is in the Burren. They arrived approximately 6,000 years ago in what was known as the Neolithic era. We know from ancient genomes that farming was accompanied by a whole group of people moving into the continent from the region known now or now known as modern Turkey, she says. They brought cattle sheep goats pottery and new housing structures they have lighter skin than the hunter gather but more sallow than today there could have been violence this would have been quite a dramatic colonization event dr cassidy added however it is more likely that they coexisted peacefully as the remains of one early farmer showed that he had hunter gatherer ancestry Okay, so Yep, that's legit right there And there's uh, Ronan McCreevy right there He's a news reporter with the Irish Times You know, this is not a quote-unquote woke agenda Or an attempt to rewrite history But this is definitely um, reinstalling the correct history right here Or a retelling of the correct narrative as it actually happened you know so that's about it right there now is the time to get into our documentary the name of the documentary is the burren heart of stone song of our ancestors it's a work of silver branch films it's an award-winning documentary when it um goes over the origins of ireland the first people in ireland now, I do not intend to copyright. This is a fair use um, thing that I'm doing. We are going to look at a little bit of the video here. Stop the video, give some commentary, uh, highlight some important points that supports the overall theme of this video. So without further ado, let's get into this documentary here.
On the far west of Ireland is a place like no other. Battered by Atlantic gales, sculpted into otherworldly shapes. We call it the Burren, the place of stone. At first sight, it's wild, timeless, empty. Few landscapes on Earth present clues to our human past as vividly as the Burren. Its structure providing both the raw materials with which we wrote our past and a subterranean labyrinth preserving clues of how we once lived. It's almost as if the Burren wants to tell us our own story. A rich narrative of triumph, survival, upheaval, and the human spirit. A story which is constantly reshaping how we think about human existence in Ireland, and a story we continue to write. As you guys can see right there, it is funded by the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland. So that's legitimacy right there. And then, of course, later on, you see the uh, title right there. There's an old magic in that. One of the strangest things about the Burren is the walls. Stretching from horizon to horizon, an empty landscape crisscrossed by stone walls. Follow these walls back in time, and they lead to another world. One of the things that makes the Burren truly remarkable as an archaeological landscape is the sheer density of sites. As you walk across the fields, you're literally tripping over the archaeology, you know, dating back thousands of years right up to the recent present. Then it's that that makes it different and exceptional amongst the archaeological landscapes of the world. Well, I've been living in and around and working on the Burren for the past 30 years, trying to really tease out the chronology of all this complicated archaeology that you can see on the ground. And it all looks ancient, that sometimes it's difficult to actually figure out the, the differences in time depth. And we are talking about huge differences in time. So when you see the tumble down old remains of cottages, they, they look ancient to us. And in fact, they are ancient. They're at least a couple hundred years old. But to the people, for instance, who built this fort, where we are now, Kahar Kaman, this was built anywhere from 1100 to 1200 years ago. So this would have been, you know, ancient to the people that built those cottages. This spectacular triple-ringed cashel is a residence. It is a chiefly residence. It had four roundhouses originally in it. So probably an extended family, possibly two or three generations living here. And most of the other area in this inner ring would have been open area, but open area for cooking, for storage, things like that. So, who you have here is Dr. Carlton Jones. He says, archaeologist of NUI Galway. Now, he talks about the chronology of things. Now, look at the housing structures. Now, look, hear what he says about the housing structures here. Now, this is very important because in later videos, I will be using sources that um, correlates with this. It ties it together. It's that, it's that link. It's that bridge to... You know what you see right here these housing structures right here 
in the way the houses are set up and what you hear about, I guess, the gypsies and um, the other Pictish people and Caledonians and Moorish people from um, the source of ancient and modern Britons. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Okay, let's go on to the next um, portion. When this tomb was built, it was surrounded by a great forest, inhabited by a completely different ethnic group of Irish people. All right, it's really about to start getting good now. You know, grab your popcorn and um, you know, just keep that in mind right there. A different type of people were the inhabitants on that island, that part of the island. Ireland. To really understand this landscape, we have to go back a lot, lot further, past the people that were building dolmens and walls and, and cairns and tombs and things. We need to go way, 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 way back. To display more credibility of this video right here, we have Carl Wright. He's an environmental biologist. He's telling us that we need to go back you know we can't just look at the current state of things but we have to go much further back moving along what an amazing environment that must have been absolutely teeming with life Imagine there were no humans at all here, so the wildlife uh, would have been just incredible. So one thing that we can glean or gather is that at this point in time, there are no people on that part of the island. There's probably no people in, that, in the British Isles right now anyway. Don't know. That's conjecture on my part, but let's get more info. As the forest matured and expanded, new inhabitants appeared. There have been three quite genetically distinct populations living on the island and in the burn uh, at different points in time. These three populations of Irelanders uh, correspond uh, to very clear cultural periods. The burn is amazing because it's sort of a stage where we can watch these different populations meet and mingle with each other over time and how that all plays out. We've been using tools that were actually developed in forensics to try to build up a database of ancient Irish human genomes from all periods of the island's prehistory to understand how the modern Irish gene pool came about. A genome is an entire map of your ancestry and all of the populations who came before you. So every genome we get gives us a piece of new information about the history of not just the burn, but of the whole island. So Dr. Laura Cassidy, she is saying a lot in this little clip right here. She is saying a mouthful. It's legit, man. I mean, she's talking about different periods of time, different types of people on that island. Well, not just in, not just relegated to the burren, but the entire island, you know, and I would go as far as to say she's not just referencing Ireland, but the entire British Isles. And we definitely have proof of that. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and move forward. With ancient genomes, we get to predict how ancient people looked, what diseases they might have been susceptible to. We can look at what pigmentation profiles they've had. There's been some really surprising results. So 
the Irish hunter-gatherer population don't have any of the mutations uh, associated with light skin, we predict that they probably actually had quite dark to black skin. But what we also find in Irish hunter-gatherer genomes is a suite of mutations that are associated with blue eye colour. These individuals might have had quite a striking pigmentation profile that we don't really see today. Okay, so there you have it. We see the first population, the prime population they call it the primitive ones that just means first okay um we see what their complexion is it's various shades of uh brown you know from what they call it uh that umber to all the way to light uh light ruddy type of color you know swarthy brunette all that stuff so whether these are the picks or the salures, vice versa, you know, I have to look at it again and, you know, compile and put all my information back in chronological order. And I will probably do that either at the end of this video or in later um, videos down the line. Okay, let's proceed. We have evidence for hunter-gatherers uh, on the coast of the Burren around nine, ten thousand years ago. What we have are small sites, so uh, little dumps of shellfish. And these would have been small bands of fairly mobile hunter-gatherers that moved around the landscape, hunting, fishing. We would imagine that they probably trekked inland for various resources, um, hazelnuts, hunting wild boar, um, something like that. But these earlier hunter-gatherers didn't leave much of an impact on the landscape. We can only imagine how these hunter-gatherers lived. Undoubtedly, they would have had a deep understanding of their environment and been skilled at using the resources with which they were presented. The Burren is a huge repository of ancient burial places and human remains. Because the limestone is particularly good in preserving bone, we can look at what impact, if any, the dark-skinned and blue-eyed hunter-gatherer has had on the Irish gene pool. So yes, these people did have a deep understanding of their environment. Um, they knew how to use the plants as medicine and everything of that nature. Um, they knew what they were doing. They were there for a long time. They were the first people there. And um, when you look at their background of where they came from, I mean, yeah, you can see they did have their know-how medicinally. So, um, yeah, let's just keep going. Actually, before I move on, the point about the burren being a repository or receptacle of human remains, that is a strong point, one to take note of, and um, just keep that in your psyche right there. So we had this Irish hunter-gatherer population living, it seems, relatively undisturbed on the island for about four millennia and then everything changes agriculture happens farming and it happens fast the earliest evidence we have of early farmers in ireland is in the burren so this is the neolithic period the new stone age six thousand years ago and we know now from ancient genomes that farming was accompanied by a whole new group of people moving into the continent from the region we now know as modern day Turkey. They brought domesticates to the island, cattle, sheep and goats, pottery, new housing structures. They have lighter skin than our 
European hunter-gatherers, it seems. But still sallow and typically dark eyes and dark hair. I think it's quite hard to imagine what it must have been like to live in the burn at that time. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so we see that these uh, hunter-gatherer um, first inhabitants, they were alone on the island for four millennia right there. That's 4,000 years. So don't think that they didn't um, develop a culture and you know, a way of life for themselves there. They did. And we're going to go over there later, you know, in different parts. Okay, now... You see, these farmers from Turkey, they migrated and settled parts of uh, the Burren and definitely the entire island, you know, definitely the entire British Isles, but we're just focusing on the Burren and Ireland in general. So we know that that was the Neolithic period right there, and they were lighter skinned people again. So let's proceed. The question we had is, well, how did they interact with the Irish hunter-gatherer population? Loads of new peoples arriving, it was probably quite exciting. Maybe a bit scary. There could have been violence. This would have been quite a dramatic colonisation event. When the first farmers arrived about 6,000 years ago, seemingly one of the first things they do is they started clearing the trees. And they've got polished stone axes. So, you know, cutting down a primeval forest covering is a huge undertaking. If you're clearing your fields, it might be much easier to go into these areas with thin, rocky soils and then clear them. So that may well be one of the reasons why we have Polnabrone located where it is on the burn. In this clip, we just see the farmers, the um, Turkish farmers coming in, setting up shop. You know, it's very familiar to how the settlers you know, in, in U.S. history, how the set, settlers came in and um, set up shop and cleared out and things. So, you know, it's an interesting parallel right there. The picking up of stones and putting one stone on top of another to build a wall to keep their animals in and dividing off the landscape. This is something that never happened before the first farmers. Clearance of forests would have been a huge thing to the hunter-gatherers that were here previously. And ritually, what the first farmers do is they start building big megalithic tombs. As we stand now, Polnabrone is currently the oldest dated megalith in, in the entire island. So that's remarkable in and of itself. Well, the question arises, why did people build big tombs like this? Big tombs out of big slabs. You can see these slabs are absolutely massive. They weigh many tons. Now, these would have had many meanings to the people, but certainly one of the meanings they seem to have held is taking ownership of the land. So now we see the farmers, they are settling in so to speak. So what happens with the hunter gatherers? Well, they're just in the background examining all of this happening in front of them. Now, the narrator did mention 
these large large structures being built so what's the meaning well one possible meaning signified the taking of ownership of the land you know so the question is did that cause any friction between the original hunter gatherers and the incoming and steadily settling the area farming um turkish people well stay tuned so all these ways of marking out the land of claiming the land this is something that we see with the advent of farming and that really then starts this interplay between the landscape and the people What happened to the Irish hunter-gatherers and how did this massive migration with farming play out? We actually do have some evidence that there was admixture and interactions between the two very different groups. And that evidence actually comes from the Burren. We are sitting right by Park Nabinia Court Tomb, which was built about 5,500 years ago by early farmers who came and set up a whole community society here in the Burren. What makes this tomb so special is that we found a male individual interred within it uh, whose genome told us that he had an Irish hunter-gatherer in his recent family tree, as recent as great-grandparent or great-great-grandparent. So what this genome really is, it's a snapshot of interaction between the indigenous hunter-gatherer communities in the Burren and the incoming farming populations. There's no reason to assume that the moment the first farmers arrived, the indigenous hunter-gatherer population just disappeared. They probably lived alongside each other for a while. We can't say if it was peaceful, if it was violent, if it differed from region to region, but what we do know, at least in the Burren, is that some Irish hunter-gatherers contributed to an early farming society. We don't see much evidence of the hunter-gatherer tools within Neolithic contexts. So on a cultural level, we don't see the input, which is why it's amazing to be able to see it on the genetic level. The Irish hunter-gatherer population, they're really a population shrouded in mystery. We have no evidence that they contributed to the modern Irish population. It seems that whatever little they contributed to the farming population was diluted beyond detection. At the start of Bronze Age, 4,000 years ago, we have another big influx of people coming in. They are sort of the tail end of a large-scale migration that started up about a millennia beforehand in the steppe region of Russia. It's really only at that point in time that we see the establishment of the modern Irish gene pool as we understand it today. So now we are at the end of this documentary here. I may leave a link in the description so you guys can view the full documentary uninterrupted. But um, some key points I want to speak on is um, the hunter gatherer and the farming population right there. Um, as it was brought out, they did cross paths and there was some mingling that happened. When I say mingling, I'm talking about mixture between the two groups. So um, notice how twice the uh, lady says um, the indigenous hunter-gatherer community or the indigenous hunter-gatherer population because these were the first people that's what they mean by primitive prime first you know in italian primo first 
So the first people there, they were indigenous. So now we see that the incoming Turkish farmers, they lived in one area and the um, hunter gatherers, they lived in their own areas, area. So it was, they were separate, but then, you know, intermix, intermingling among some groups, but for the most part, on a whole, they live in their own area. So one um, important fact that they brought out is that in the Bronze Age, another wave of migration occurred. Now, keep this in mind, it came from where? Well, the first one came from Turkey, but this one came from Russia, the Russian steppe region of the world. And as we heard in the uh, documentary, this migration, the people who made who migrated over and settled, they established the um, gene pool of the modern Irish people that we see today. And um, it's not only the Irish, but it's the Scottish, the, the modern Welsh, the modern Britons, and um, so on and so forth. Regarding those goats at the end of the clip, but it's kind of fitting, man. You know, in my opinion, man, <laughs> a lot of a goat-like element came into the British Isles, so that's why I put it in there, you know. Not to say that a goat-like element wasn't already on the island, because it probably was, more than likely, if you know the makeup of the island. All right, so before I end the video, some of the key takeaways of this documentary is that, um, well, some swarthy people, melanated people, um, brune brunette people aka black people they were the first ones to settle to migrate and settle into um ireland you know so that makes them indigenous right there so a major non-melanated people migration came from turkey and it was farmers keep that in mind the farmers right there because there are terms for those farmers, people who farm the land. It was, it's a distinction between the farming population and the non-farming farming population. So they were lighter skinned people and they came during the Neolithic period. So that means that for four millennia or 4,000 years, it was just swarthy people walking around, melanated people walking around with blue eyes, okay. Now, the farmers came, kind of impeded on the hunter-gatherer population right there, started building large structures. Now, I guess in their, in their mind, they were taking ownership of the land. So, I mean, that can cause friction right there, even though they did mingle with some of these uh, indigenous hunter-gatherer populations. But then in the Bronze Age, another... Um, wave of migration occurred and that was from the Russian steppe region and these were also basically people with a pale complexion non-brown non-swarthy non-melanated so they're white people so with that said that will conclude part two of this uh, swarthy melanated black Ireland episode